There are many so-called Christian preachers or teachers who put forward theory that Jesus Christ is God the Father who came to earth in order to die and that this sacrifice of blood by Jesus Christ has the effect of purifying the sins of other people. Their idea is that mankind as a whole is sinful. We all got dirty or, um, or contaminated when our great, 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 great grandparents made the wrong decision to not serve God and instead try to be God. So therefore, we have to suffer because of the God because of the guys in the past. Um, what they are saying is that somebody else is wrong, is now contaminating us. And we're only going to get clean by blood sacrifice. And it was all planned that God became man and he came down to the earth and God himself became the lamb the blood sacrifice to please God because there is no other way for mankind's sin to be purified. So they are saying there's no other way for a man's sin to be purified other than God himself coming to the earth then man sacrificed God on an altar. So um, here we, we can see how People are trying to limit the power you know, of God. So they're, they're thinking that there's no other way for humanity to be purified by, its, by sin, but for God to sacrifice himself as if, as if God has no power to purify us. So he has to undergo this... Um, experience where he will be coming down as man and will be crucified no? as blood sacrifice. So th this is basically what people are, um, this is what, this is their idea of why Jesus Christ came, no? so that we can be purified of the sin that somebody else did. No? So basically, um, this Adam and Eve person, you know, they did something and we have to reap what they saw. You know, and for us to be able to be purified, 
God has to sacrifice himself because he has no power to in any way to purify us but just become man and be crucified uh, to sacrifice blood so there are a lot of problems in this theory first of which is the idea that God has to come under the laws of material nature in order to have the power to somehow purify man either individually or as a whole mankind our sins God does not need to follow the Ten Commandments because God is not under the laws of material nature not only that but God is not God's servant God is the master God makes the law so if you if you believe that God has to follow the laws Um, if we believe that if God has to follow the laws of God, then we might ask that, then isn't he a sinner because he's always killing? Uh, isn't God ultimately responsible for the world and aren't people dying all over the place? Well, God took away, you, you, you've seen um, in the news that people are dying so it's like saying God is taking them and if if God can be under the laws of material nature it's it's like God is killing these people and should he be punished also for doing that he's always stealing he takes things away from everybody we think it's ours, well, God takes it from us sooner or later. So we can accuse God of stealing. If he is, he can be under the laws of material nature. God doesn't necessarily follow the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are for those people who are not God. If there is some kind of rule laid down in scripture that you have to have some kind of sacrifice in order for something to happen, fine, then that's for man. That's not for God. God does not need to follow the rules of scripture. It's a crazy idea to think that God has to follow certain laws in order for man or individual human beings or people to be spiritually purified, why is it necessary for God to descend to this material dimension in order to experience being crucified? Why is it that the act is somehow connected with man being purified of sin? They are saying that the most horrible offensive activity, namely the crucifixion of the pure loving servant and child of God is a religious sacrifice. I mean, a real spiritual sac sacrifice is really an act of love. How could anyone declare that the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is an act of love? So, um, most, especially in the, in the Christian community, they're saying this, that... Um, it's an act of love. That's why Jesus Christ was crucified. And it contradicts with, with the idea that uh, the, with the idea of sacrifice. Because um, sacrificing something is an act of love where you give whatever you have and you, you, you are not thinking of something in return. So that's why it's called sacrifice. But when you give something for something in return, then that's not sacrifice, that's, that's a business deal. You give something because you're expecting something in return then 
you're, you're, you're having a business deal. So here, the idea that people have where Jesus Christ was crucified for our sins to be cleansed as an act of love is somehow wrong because it, it contradicts it contradicts the sense of love, you know, loving relationship. Well, for Jesus Christ, no, it, he was doing it because he, he loves everyone and he wants everyone to be calm, to go back to God. So it, it's an act of love for Jesus' part but not for those people who crucified him. They did not crucify him because um, it's an act of love. There's no love in there. And it was not Jesus' choice to be crucified. People were um, disturbed by the idea that this person is teaching something and people are following him. So the, the church leaders, they, they cannot have control over their followers. So it disturbs the, the, the church leaders. And so they have planned a way how to get rid of this person, of Jesus Christ. You can see that there's no love there. Jesus didn't go out there and say, okay, everybody, we're going to have a nice big crucifixion today. Jesus is loving God and he's loving the people who are crucifying him. But the people who are crucifying him aren't crucifying him out of love. So there was, there was no love there no? when they were trying to crucify Jesus Christ. No? The priest is the one who slits the throat of the animal and sacrifices the blood to God with his congregation as worship to God. The people who crucified Jesus Christ did not act out of sacrifice to God. They act in direct offense to God. If there is a sin which is cast upon mankind as a whole, it was not Adam and Eve. It was when the people crucified Jesus Christ. It is such an offensive act. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ was so displeasing to the Supreme Person that it would not be hard to imagine the Supreme Lord saying, to hell with all these people and all their descendants. They are so offensive. I don't want anything to do with them. They rejected my son, and so I reject them. Jesus Christ said it clearly. He said, if you accept my father, then you will accept me. If you accept me, my father will accept you. If you accept my father, I will accept you. So when Jesus was crucified, it was, on, it was the opposite. They, they were not accepting Jesus Christ. Uh, actually, they were trying to get rid of him. So it's clear, it's clear from the, um, for these people are not really accepting Jesus Christ. So the statement of Jesus that if they did not accept him, clearly they are not accepting God also to be in the same consciousness where we accept the crucifixion of Jesus as something that um, God made so that we can be clear of, of our sins is simply, um, we are trying to be part of this act where 
we are trying to accept these people who crucified him as someone that we belong to like oh that's 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 a good thing that what happened to Jesus Christ no? so some people are even happy with with the idea that they're thinking that their sins are purified because of this crucifixion no? so um they they are happy and sometimes sir bhagavan das um um gives us this story about this people who even sing how happy they are because of they are bathing in the blood of jesus as as if um it's a purifying act actually it's it's the opposite it's the opposite because we are committing a great offense to the devotee of god to someone who is um very close to god so the day jesus was crucified is called good friday So what's good about it? Why is it good that on this day the pure devotee, the pure son of the supreme person was murdered, crucified, tortured, and that is not good. It is the ultimate bad. It is the ultimate offense and one should not rejoice in it. One should be crying in it. Does a mother whose child is shot by a drive-by killing make a replica of the damn gun and wear it on her neck of course not why it is because she loves her child and here you have a situation where millions and millions of people believe that they love Jesus Christ yet they have no qualms about calling the day of infamy when he is crucified good and why do they call it good it is good because we get to be saved because of it so people are happy about this crucifixion because um they're thinking about being saved if we analyze it properly this type of people are just thinking about themselves so the type of consciousness people have wherein their goal in life is to become saved so they say that the greatest thing that you can achieve is salvation is um a selfish act because you're still thinking about yourself you're not thinking about um the son of god so imagine yourselves imagine you have this person very close to you tapos um maybe he was he was robbed or he was shot and um would you make a painting about your this person that you are close to no you you draw there this this person lying down and someone pointing a fin a gun to that person will you make a portrait out of it to remind yourself about that that loved one that you have or maybe um this loved one was hit by a truck will will you be wearing mug wheels or wheels you will be carrying a fire what's that brand fire stone nagulong no gagawin yung pendant to remind yourselves to remind ourselves ah oh, my 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 loved one was hit by a truck we will not be doing that because it will give us pain um remembering something like this will only give us pain so seeing god's love 
remembering God, remembering God's um, son being crucified. It, it's it's actually a, a painful thing to look at when you, you I, I don't know I cannot imagine my love my loved one being remembered on on a cross no? so and we see even in some countries no? they they erected these big sculptures of Jesus Christ on the cross. I think there is one in Brazil, if I remember. Have you heard about this sculpture, the Redeemer? It's a big sculpture of Jesus Christ on the cross. And You'll see it in in wherever you are in, in in that country. So uh, it, it, it's very painful to see such image no, of someone you love on. It's like. Yeah, you know, you, you, we get reminded of the horrible thing that happened to our loved ones. One time, um, some time ago, there was this trend about um, a Filipina Canadian. She she's popular online, and I forgot her name, but she's popular for some folks, and. <laughs> She wear, she wear this tattoo, so the tattoo was um, the rising sun. You know the rising sun, what it symbolizes. It's the Japanese flag, so it, it it's the Japanese flag, and she wore this tattoo and she she flexed it on on online, and <clears throat> so the Koreans were got angry because of that because they were reminded of the horrible thing the Japanese did to their country no. it's the same thing if we see something that reminds us of the horrible things that happened to ourselves or someone we love it, our emotions will stir up. Sometimes we get mad or we get very sad and lonely. Because these things, we're not supposed to um, meditate on things that will make us, make us sad or lonely or angry. So it's, it's weird for people to carry these symbols that we know will make someone else sad. And for this matter, God, you know, the Supreme Person, is sad with the incident that his loving child was murdered, was crucified. For those who do not love Jesus Christ, there is certainly logic here. Yes, that's good. But for a devotee of God, for one who actually has some love for God and who actually loves Lord Jesus Christ, they don't think it's good. But for a person who just wants to be cleansed of their sinful reactions so that they can go out and sin some more, Rejoice. Rejoice in the blood of the Savior. So this is what they're saying. Bathe in the blood of Jesus. They sing this in their Sunday services. 
So they are using Jesus Christ as um, the, the blood of Jesus as somehow like a tissue paper. You know, when you eat, you have this tissue. You wipe your mouth of all the dirt and then you eat some more and then you wipe. It, it, it's similar to this. We commit a sin, we commit some um, acts that will separate us from God. And then we use the servant of God to clean us from these acts. And then afterwards, we do it again. We have, that's why there are se several sacraments that we follow. You, know, you the, some group, they, you go to the church and you confess your sins you know, from the church leaders. And then afterwards, okay, you pray this. And then after, after a week or so, you, you come back again, forgive me for what I have done, and then, okay, you pray this, no, do this. So, and not only that, some people, oh, I have to go to church now, I have done a lot of things. So, I have to receive Jesus Christ again. And after that you come out of the church and you do your thing. It's like Jesus Christ is, is something that you use for cleaning your sins. That's not why he was here. That's not the reason why Jesus came. His reason for coming was to remind us that we should go back to God and the only way we can go back to Him is we develop our loving relationship with God. This is the message of Jesus Christ. He was not here to clean our sins. He was not here to heal us. He was a different kind of a doctor. He was the doc, um, he's a spiritual doctor. He, he heals us of a certain type of disease. That disease is materialism. And saying that we are somehow, we, we give our life to God or we give our life to Jesus Christ and still live a life a materialistic life, then that is the opposite of the claim that we are um, surrendering to the devotee of God, to Jesus Christ. So actual surrender means that we live a life that is focused on developing this loving service. Focus on following the instruction of Jesus Christ. So his first and foremost instruction was to give our life, our love, our heart to the Supreme Person. When we are on that path, then we can say that we are followers of Jesus Christ. We are, we can actually say that we are truly Christians. We are real Christians. But if the life that we live is, we are only using Jesus Christ as a type of a doormat, as a type of um, cleaning material for the sins that we've, we have and we're planning to do in the future, then that's not real Christianity that so-called Christianity. And you are 
um, in cahoots with those people who crucified Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, hanggang dito na lang muna <laughs> because of the time. Good morning, everyone. Our bon namaste. <laughs>